trying to turn to God, yo. I'm I'm not trying to put like my pinky toe in no more. I'm not gonna just be sitting on the edge of the pool. I wanna jump full in, I wanna dive all in chat. A famous YouTuber named Jideon, who's known for his pranks and somewhat outrageous content, recently announced on stream that he's turning to God, that he's giving his life to God. And you'll never guess what was the cause of this turn. So that's all I'm gonna say, but you know, I don't wanna just talk the talk. I want you guys to like see it in my actions, you feel me? I was with my girl, we were Ubering back from her college and then right when we got back to the crib, the Uber driver, she looked back at us and she asked us a question. My aunt, me answering it made my heart sunk, but she asked, she said, if you guys were to die right now, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? I had to be honest with myself. I like I had to look into myself and I was like, the way I'm living right now, if God was to take my breath away right now, I'm going to hell. I couldn't even lie about it, chat. You feel me? Like now this takes guts big time. I don't know if you guys have ever shared the gospel with somebody, shared the gospel with a stranger, but it is a nerve wracking experience. Your hands are sweating. Your heart is just beating out of your chest. And also for this Uber driver, you, another Another thing comes into play you're thinking about your livelihood you don't want a person to have a really negative reaction or feel like you're you know pushing something on them and then they give you a negative review and that impacts how much money that you're making and that affects how you're able to provide for your family a lot of things are at stake here and I don't know if it were me honestly I would have a hard time pushing through those excuses I would have a hard time pushing through those things that say you know what hey no I need to be responsible here I shouldn't share the gospel I shouldn't compromise uh, you know my work here but this person they saw it as more important that they shared the gospel with Gideon and maybe they didn't even know it was a you know, famous YouTuber. They didn't even know, but it was just what they were called to do because they valued what was eternal over what is temporal. To choose love for them even though you might get rejected. And you trust that God is going to bring growth out of that. He's going to take that little seed and he's going to build his kingdom. One of my favorite verses here is 2 Timothy 4, 2. It says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Be ready in season and be ready out of season. What does this mean? Basically, just always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. And how can you be ready? Well, we don't have enough time to go into all of that today. But what can we begin with? We can begin with a good question. And, you know, Gideon was asked a really good question. It's, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? That's a good place to be. Because a lot of people will think, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. And then with them, you can say, hey, you know, have you kept the God's law? Have you been a, a really good person and they come to find out oh actually I haven't been such a good person but the proper response is not okay well I've been a bad person let me just fix up my life let me try to walk more old ladies across the street so I can be a good person because what that person turns into is a hyper religious person I think of Jesus parable when he talks about the Pharisee that went up to pray and he says God thank you that I'm not like other men these tax collectors these you know extortioners these people that do all this bad stuff thank you that I am different. That's the kind of person that tries to clean up their life and becomes this religious freak. But what we need to be turning to is to say, hey, you know, like the tax collector in the parable, it says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. I have nothing to offer you, God. I know I can't change my life enough for, to me, for me to earn your love. But I'm just, I'm here in humility and I'm laying down my pride and I'm asking you for forgiveness. And that's the kind of heart that God wants. He wants the humble heart. Now back to Gideon. He didn't stop with that. There's more. And you know what's crazy, chat? I'll be letting so many worldly things dictate how my day's gonna go. You feel me? You got people out here that are battling cancer, uh, having horrible, like, you know, being victims of horrible crimes and all kinds of stuff, right? and they still have the ability to put a smile on their face and be genuinely happy. I get a strike on my channel and I'm not able to post for a week. I'm over here in the slumps. You would have thought you would have thought my dog died, chat, the way I was around here acting when I was gone for that week, bro. Just pouting, being moody, being rude to people. The only reason why I was acting like that is because I'm letting worldly things dictate how my spirit is and like you know the bible talks about it all the time you know you you can't be moved by the world you have to hate the world chat like it, it's crazy like jesus is telling me that i have to hate the world 
but the world loves me. You feel me? When your heart is focused on what is eternally significant, the things of this world, the temporal things, they hold less weight. It doesn't mean that they hold no weight because they definitely do. But when we know that, hey, I'm ultimately going to spend eternity with God, that I know how this story plays out. God wins in the end. The things that get you down on a day-to-day -day basis, like when you're, when you're not thinking about God, when you're not thinking eternally, then yeah, they can just destroy you, right? But when you do think, okay, man, God has me. He has me in his hand. He cares for me. And I, I, know, I know how this works, works out. I know how this story pans out. So I can be at peace knowing that God is in control. That's a huge weight that is lifted. Gideon said something interesting. He said that it's, it's hard to hate the world when the world loves you. That's such an interesting place to be because he, he's not saying that he, he wants to hate people of the world, but the worldliness of the world, right? The, what the Bible calls the flesh, this worldliness, this sinfulness. So it's hard to hate that when it loves you, when the whole world, the, the, the sinful culture, they love you and they love what you do and they support you and they cheer you on to a lot of this immorality, right? The sinfulness. It's hard to say, oh, I'm going to pack it up and all of a sudden not receive that praise anymore. But Gideon is realizing that there's something more, much more important than people's praise. Now, Jesus did say that the world will hate you because they hated me first. And if Gideon continues to preach the gospel and speak up about his faith, then it won't be much long, longer before they begin to turn on him. Before we jump back in, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting what I'm doing and equipping people to follow Jesus daily. Guys, this is my full-time gig. This is what I do. Um, this is my mission. This is my heart. I've been doing it for about five years, just gone full time recently. And I'm not going to say that it's not scary. It is scary sometimes when you realize, okay, hey, uh, I'm doing this full time and this is how I support my family and this is how <laughs> I pay my rent. But at the same time, God has provided for me. He continues to provide for me and provide for my family. So thank you for being a vessel of that providing as well by supporting me on Patreon and donating on PayPal. That is a huge blessing. Now, back to the video. If, if I'm going to follow the spirit, I'm not going to have a problem putting away worldly things. And I just had to like look at myself, chat, and I had to just think, if I do follow Jesus, if I do follow his word to tooth and nail of what it is front to back, then I'm not going to be Gideon anymore. I'm not going to be popping. I'm not going to be on your guys for you pages with edits. I'm not going to be having the ASAP Rockies and the Mark Wahlbergs hit me up. I'm not going to be having uh, the NBA ask me to do stuff like and like for the longest chat, like I, I've been pushing this off for like the last year and a half, two years. But I was like, I'm not ready yet. Like, ah, I don't want to do it yet. I don't want to do it yet. I don't want to do it yet. But after that lady got done talking to me, it was like, if I were to die right now, with me chopping it up with ASAP Rocky, with me chopping it up with Mark Wahlberg or uh, Mark Cuban or going to the Simon charity match, would any of that really matter, chat? No, it really, it really wouldn't. This is just me like really talking to y'all. Like this is me trying to just be so 100% transparent. But God tells us that a bird doesn't have to worry about where he's going to get his next meal from. And then he said, are you not better than a bird? I'm way better than a bird. So why am I tripping? Why am I? Okay. I think Mark eight sums up what he's saying really, really well. Let me grab my Bible. I found my Bible. I found it. Mark eight and calling the crowd to him with his disciples. He said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me for whoever saves his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Look, some people might say, Gideon, you can keep posting content. Just make it more consistent with your Christian worldview and stop posting, you know, inappropriate stuff. And you can do, you know, still do that. Uh, but what Gideon is realizing here and what he's revealing is that it's an idol in his life. That if he were to continue on this path, that would be a disruption between his relationship with God. And because he cares so much about that, because that's everything to him, or at least it appears that way based on what he's saying, 
he wants to give it up. He's willing to give it up, even though he's giving up millions of dollars, like millions and millions of dollars. And maybe you'll never be put in a position where you have that decision, where you're, you know, you have the decision to give up something in your life that is an idol, but then you also have to give up millions of dollars. That's a hard decision for a lot of people. But for him, it's not hard because it means nothing to gain the whole world and yet lose your soul. Now in your life right now, what is it that's keeping you from God? What are those things, those hangups, those idols that are in your life that you've chosen over God? Are those things really worth the price of your soul? Are those things really worth it? They're not. They're not. You already know they're not. So what do you do about it? Well, today I'd ask you to cry out to God for him to free you from those things so you can lay those things down and you can repent of them and you can find freedom from them. And he will, he will provide you freedom. Look, in my life personally, he's provided me freedom from lust. He's provided me freedom from pride. He, he saved me in so many different ways. That doesn't mean I don't struggle with sin. It, it, I still struggle with sin, but it means that I see things so much more clearly now because God has given me eyes to see. These things that are eternal and, and him and delighting in him and enjoying him are so much more fulfilling, are so much more all satisfying than these things that we used to think were fulfilling. And for Gideon, I hope he's beginning to realize and it sounds like he is that even, you know, the massive YouTube following will not satisfy him. It is only in Christ that we can find satisfaction and salvation. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope it's been beneficial. If you enjoy this content, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. Until next time, God bless.